Hola, y'all. Hola, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're embracing Club 21. Yes, we are. My name's Spencer. And I'm Daniel. And look, we are doing a double feature of Geography Now right now. Uh, doing the Geography Now Mexico and Geography Go Mexico. We've got them queued up here. Crazy. Now, before we came on here, we were just talking about our experience with Mexico. And I think the consensus is we've only been to the tourist traps and not the actual yeah. Mexico that's yeah. the real Mexico. Or so, better or for worse. I feel like that's the thing. You, know, you ask one of let's say a normal i would say someone that that travels right they've been to mexico like, have you been in the culture up there outside the tourist traps no chances are they haven't they have not been outside the tourist traps it's a beautiful place the tourist traps i've been to chichen itza and cozumel mexico obviously gorgeous obviously one of the wonders of the world i think it is those i think the chichen itza is at least so beautiful place beautiful people beautiful culture but then again, I didn't jump in. I was too young to really jump in and go outside the tourist traps and explore. Not the same with me. I've been to Cozumel on a cruise. I was in, well, I was like nine or 10 years old. And mm -hmm. my dad, he just work took him all around the world. And we as a family went to Mexico in a city when I was five. And I think we stayed in mostly the resort areas. So yeah. I was too young to even appreciate it for what it is now. Me as I'm 31 now, and I guess I would have a more open mind and be able to see what's what is part of the real Mexico, what's not. So, but then again, we will just have to see through this, yep. these two videos. You ready? Yep, let's do it, man. Three, two, one. Ah, finalmente, hemos llegado al episodio de México. Pero no puedo hacer esto sin un mexicano de verdad. Denle la bienvenida a mi amigo César de Puerto Vallarta. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. César, si tuvieras que decir una cosa de México para abrir este episodio, ¿cuál sería? Pues, México es un país místico, colorido, lleno de cultura y tradiciones. México va mucho más allá que el mariachi y el tequila solamente. Eh, pronto les contaremos. Bueno. Oh, yeah, and he speaks English, too. Oh, yeah, I went to college in Texas, <laughs> so a little bit. <laughs> it's time to learn geography. What is that? A baboon. A I baboon. Believe. Okay, okay, we got it, we got it. All right, let's, let's vamanos. Let's go. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. And I'm Cesar. As you know, I'm American. Caesar's Mexican. We're neighbors. I'm excited. You excited? Yes, I'm very excited for this episode. You know, I've been following uh, geography now since like the BC countries. So this is something I've been waiting for for a long time now. Oh, by the way, we stopped doing sponsored brands on country episodes. But this time, we'll break that rule because Caesar can hook you up in Puerto Vallarta. Caesar, tell them what they need to know. Yes, well, visit discoverpbr.com. Check it out. Tours, transportation, transfers, everything you need. To and yeah. Geography Now endorses them. All right, comenzamos. Sí, bienvenidos a México. All right, so now we already have one place to visit uh, outside of Cozumel and uh, Mexico City. There you go. And Puerto guess, Vallarta. That's, yeah. Do it. Yeah. Named after the Mexica people from ancient Aztec times, Mexico is a powerhouse on the world stage. And it's hard to imagine how the entire Latin world, let alone the Western Hemisphere, would operate without it. First of all, Mexico is located on the southern part of the North American continent, straddling the Pacific Ocean, Gulf of California, and the Gulf of Mexico, bordered by the U.S. to the north and Guatemala and Belize to the southeast. The country is divided into 32 federal entities, 31 states, one of which is called Mexico, and the capital city of Mexico City. Oh, and Mexico City is technically sinking a about 10 to 20 centimeters a year because it was built on a lake. Anyway, with a greater metropolitan population over 21 million, Mexico City is the largest city and oldest capital city in the entire Western Hemisphere, and in itself has about the same GDP and economy as the entire country of Peru. After Mexico City- Oh wow, that's a lot of people. In, wow. Yeah, a wow. big GDP. That's bigger than New York City. Wow. For sure. Ah, oh, man. That's man. a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Holy I I think crap. the other other city that's comparable is maybe like Manila, the Philippines. Manila, maybe or Tokyo, like in terms of like population density. That's crazy. That's a lot of people, man. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. 
city though. The next largest cities are Guadalajara in Jalisco and Monterrey in Nuevo León. And if you come here, you will most likely fly to one of the busiest airports. The capitals, Mexico City International, then the second place is actually Cancun, then Guadalajara and Monterrey Internationals. Yeah, we Americans love Cancun and we love going there all the time. And we do too. Just clean up your vomit next time, okay? No promises. <laughs> Today, Mexico has no territorial disputes. They did once with France over Clipperton Island, but that got settled. Otherwise, the border with the U.S., yeah, we know, we know what you're thinking, <laughs> but hear me out, it actually does have some quirky anomalies. Yeah. For example, on the border with Tijuana, there is a friendship park where you can chat and shake hands with locals of both sides through a fence that goes all the way into the Pacific. Further east in California, two towns split by the border kind of trolled each other. One named itself Mexicali and the other side Calexico. And in Naco, <laughs> Arizona, the local residents have a cross-border volleyball game every so often. No, we don't want to sugarcoat everything. Yes, there are certain sections that are more barricaded and strict on the crossings, but besides the complicated nature behind these issues, there's a lot more to it than most media outlets portray. Speaking of territorial anomalies... In the southernmost state of Mexico, Chiapas has some interesting towns that operate under a system called Usos y Costumbres, which means something like autonomous customary law. The people, mostly of indigenous descent, govern their own internal affairs, and the government just kind of lets them do their own thing without interference. It sounds kind of scary, but today it's actually a kind of a dark fascination that has drawn in a ton of tourists and finally let's just get it over with just like how we discussed in the italy episode everybody knows about it it's nothing new to a varying degree of power and disputable boundaries yes certain areas of mexico do still kind of fall under cartel influence it's a very strange system run by underground individuals that kind of meshes itself into normalcy with everyday citizens there are syndicates like the cartel of sinaloa in the northwest the zetas in the northeast the familia michoacana in the center of the country and the Jalisco Nueva Generación in the West. All right, so this is very important. This is very important because this is like, I feel like this is um, an unfortunate reality of visiting uh, Mexico right now. You know, it's, it's, the, it's you have to, yeah, it's the cartels. Yeah. Granted, they're the ones, I would say they're the ones um, that strike deals up with, let's say, the government and all of them. Uh, all of them in power to keep the touristy areas of Mexico safe. I know it sounds kind of weird, yeah. but they need the tourist industry, the tourism industry. Right, so, right. That's that's a money uh, avenue right yeah, there. So, you know, it's this is this is I don't know how how relevant. Um, I think the I don't know if this Sinaloa is 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 still I, I forgot. I forgot who was got hemmed up. Was it Chapo? Was it El Chapo that got hemmed up? Was he part of Sinaloa? I'm not sure. But um, but yeah, no, this is a, is a real issue. I feel like not just in Mexico, but going down south, in you know, South America, from Mexico beyond, it's just there's there's cartels that control certain parts of the country. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are more dangerous. Da uh, they're all dangerous, more friendlier but, uh, than others. Some of them are a lot more violent than than others, but all are violent, right? Yeah, They're not government degree. sanctioned organizations, put right. it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but that's, that's the rule of the land. Remember, you know, we're not, we're not all, this is an important piece of information, at least for people that are uh, traveling outside the U S this is, this is very important, you know? Yeah. So. And, and as honestly, it's something I really don't know that much about. And I, if, I am to go to Mexico. I don't want to, you know, make the wrong step and yeah, and want to know my stuff before going down there. Yeah, yeah. So that's this is this is an unfortunate uh, map, but very important. If yeah. you if you if you could if you could call it that, it's a very important map. So yeah, and and, and good on you know Barb's and uh, uh, Cesar for not sugarcoating a lot of this yep. stuff, yep. and not only that, but also stuff with the the border, which has been a hot topic for as long as we can remember that's Americans. a that's a topic we won't have on this channel there's other channels and news outlets that cover that topic yeah yeah we'll we'll just skip past that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> Nueva generación in the West. Caesar, I'll let you explain this. 
Today, it's very hard to estimate how many people are still involved and how much money is coming out since numbers are always changing, especially after the war was declared on the cartels by the government in 2006 by President Calderon. But for what it's worth, the situation is still being dealt with today. Most Mexicans can agree that this operation largely failed. A large portion of the violence in Mexico is still caused by disputes between cartels for territory. Thank you, Caesar. Well, I'm glad we got that out of the way because now we can lighten up a bit and talk about the almost infinite number of beautiful notable spots Mexico has to offer. Some cool man-made landmarks might include places like the Basilica de Guadalupe in Mexico City, UNAM, the oldest university in North America, the Castle of Chapultepec, the catacombs at Templo Expiatorio, Biblioteca Vasconcelos, the tunnels of Puebla, the Plaza de Toros Mexico, the bronze sculptures of Puerto Vallarta, and if you're in for some creepy stuff, the Casa de los Lamentos in Guanajuato, the Torture Museum of Hacienda del Cochero, the Mummy Museum in Guanajuato, that creepy doll island of Las Muñecas, us. And every so often, you might come across a Malverde altar. He's the patron saint of drug cartels. They have a patron saint for drug cartels. <laughs> but best for last, there are hundreds of Mesoamerican pyramids and sites. Some are possibly yet to be discovered hidden in the jungles, but the most famous ones probably being Cholula, which is the largest monument ever constructed according to the Guinness World Records. Monte Alban. Teotihuacan, the Pyramid of the Sun and the Moon. And one of the new seven wonders of the world, the Mayan Pyramid of Chichen Itza. Keep in mind we said man-made. I know a lot of you might be wondering, why didn't they talk about all the cool natural sites like the cenote, cenotes, or the volcanoes and canyons? Well, that's because that stuff will belong in the next section, the... <laughs> Man, so, that's a lot to cover right now. And I love, I love how uh, Barb's was like, all right, we got the yep. that stuff out of the way, and now yeah. we're going to talk about the fun stuff now. Yep. I love that though. That's that's the way because you know you can't be completely oblivious to all that that stuff when you're discussing countries. Like, all right, there's stuff that uh, you don't want to talk about, but you got to, right? right you know, exactly. so it's like, okay, now you kind of know. Let's move on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, acknowledge it. Move on. Yep. Mexico's land is kind of like a pinata, colorful and full of surprises. Dude, a piñata? You really rushed this part of the script, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. First of all, the country is located on the west edge where the North American plate meets the Pacific plate, making them part of the larger ring of fire. The country is made up of three main mountain chains. The Sierra Madre Occidental, which has the largest lake, the Lake of Chapala in Jalisco. The Sierra Madre Oriental, which has the highest mountain peak, or Pico de Orizaba. And Sierra Madre del Sur, which effectively surrounds the large Mexican plateau in the middle. A narrow flat valley lies between the Chiapas Mountains mountains, which then swings up to the flat, humid Yucatan to the southeast. Oh yeah, and don't forget the arid Baja Peninsula to the west. At the bottom of the plateau lies the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt, where most of the seismic and volcanic activity lies. The country has about 44 volcanoes. The most violent one is considered to be the Popocatépetl, which is less than 70 kilometers away from Ciudad de México. There's also the world's smallest volcano, Cuexcomate, in Puebla, at only 13 meters tall. <laughs> Aww, what a cute little force of destruction. Oh, that's nothing. A volcano once randomly erupted out of a dude's farm in 1943 in Michoacán. It grew over a thousand feet tall. Boo! The Rio Grande River, which makes part of the border shared with Texas, is the... <laughs> you talk about having a Monday. I was like, they should have named that Monday. They should have <laughs> named that volcano Monday. He just pounded his feel all of a sudden. Fucking volcano. It's never zero. It's never, never zero. Never zero percent chance. <laughs> Or whatever, whatever the uh, uh, Spanish <laughs> word for Monday is, call it that. Lunes. Lunes. Uh, I love, I love that. He's just, he's just chilling, having a great Mexican day, and all of a sudden, fucking volcano! Surprise, yeah. bitches! New volcano. What? <laughs> Vol volcano de Lunes. That's what that one should be called. Volcano de Lunes. <laughs> I love that. Oh God, I, that's a bad day right there. That's yeah. a bad day. That's... He's like, he's probably had like what a glorious day it is today and then i'm so glad i declined that traveling salesman that's trying to sell my volcano insurance you know <laughs> what a waste of money <laughs> oh, oh you can't God. take us anywhere i swear 
thousand feet tall. Whoa! The Rio Grande River, which makes part of the border shared with Texas, is the country's longest river. However, the longest non-shared river completely in Mexico would be the Nazas Aguanabal. Along the coast are flatter green plains. Basically, the north part is rockier and drier with landmarks like the Barrancas del Cobre Canyon and the Sonoma Desert with the massive crater-pocketed Tecolote lava fields, whereas the south part is humid and lush with biosphere reserves and rainforests harboring thousands of animal species. <laughs> Speaking of which, Mexico ranks as the fourth most biodiverse country in the planet, 10 to 12 percent of the world's biodiversity. Oh, and bugs! There's a monarch butterfly sanctuary at Pascuaro, and the firefly forest in Tlaxcala, as well as the national animal, the golden eagle, and the most iconic dog breed, the chihuahua, the smallest dog in the world, and the nearly hairless Choloscuincle, or Cholo dog. Remember we saw those dogs when I visited you, uh, Caesar, and then like, uh, yeah, that was like my second favorite part of the whole trip. Um, and what was your first favorite part? The part where you introduced Esclava to me, and then remember I got a little tipsy, and then we played poker, and then uh, I won, and then I almost fell down and it's funny though, because Mexico also has a ton of like secret hidden natural land formations. There's that strange 153 kilometer long underground river in the Yucatan. The Sotano de las Golondrinas in San Luis Potosí, which is the largest cave shaft in the world. The giant crystals in the caves of Naica. There's even the Islas Marietas, which has a hidden beach inside a hole in the island. Ah. You almost brought me there, but we couldn't go in. Yeah, unfortunately the weather conditions didn't permit it, but still, visit discoverpbr.com. Yeah, 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 I'll come back and visit someday. <laughs> That's a lot right there. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, man. A lot of biodiversity, and <laughs> I guess we got a little sneak peek of Geography Go here. Hell yeah, that's 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 pretty sweet, man. I would love to go to those. I would love to go to those. Yeah, man, I'm with you. I'm there. I'm with Talk you. about humid area with tropical beaches. Without a doubt, I am ready. Don't mm -hmm. if if there was if there was a sponsor to this channel, like send me there, guys. Let's go. Yeah. No. Well, we we'll, we'll probably hit up that link very soon. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Hey, wait. Can I come? Yeah, sure. Catch. What are these goggles? Yeah, you can swim there from Long Beach. What? Resource wise, Mexico is the world's largest producer of avocados, silver. They introduced tons of new foods that would make their way across the globe, namely the big four corn, chiles, chocolate, and tomatoes. We would not have pizza if it wasn't for Mexico. Let that sink in. Oh, and dear Mexico, thank you for inventing tajin and chamoy. My life was empty before this discovery. Food wise, there's too much to cover, but generally speaking, there are seven regions of cuisine. In the Yucatan Peninsula, they love the anato seeds. They have Mayan dish dishes like pork chuk. In the south, the tlayudas are very popular and the chapulines. <laughs> Remember Ken, we tried those and they were good, right? Uh, I'm sorry, what? You're fired. Anyway, in the Baja California, there are plenty of fish dishes and other seafood. The Bajio is very popular for their guacamayas. In the north, they love cabrito is very popular in Monterrey and they also have a big Tex-Mex influence. In the west, we eat pozole, birria, and we also invented tequila. In the center of Mexico, there's a lot of tortas, mole, and chile poblano. Economy-wise, Mexico is the 15th largest in the world in nominal terms and 11th by purchasing power. And they are busy. The World Trade Organization and OECD has ranked Mexico as the hardest working country in the world. On average, they work over 43 hours a week. Mm. That's it? Dude, that <laughs> actually seems pretty low to be honest. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, what? 43 a week? Like, maybe add another 40 onto that. Oh like, Jesus. Goodness. Oh, man. I know you're not Mexican, but you, you I think you know more people that can talk on like, that. Excuse me? 43 hours? I, they Some some of those guys work that a day, mm. you know? So yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Okay, cool. Wow. They're up there. I, I, I'd be interested to see how it compares to the United States. It's, we're probably lower, right? I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. We're probably I, higher. Probably, yeah. I, and I'm not. I'm not, and that's not a boastful thing. I'm no, just saying not, we are. We are slaves to work. That's, yeah, we're. Yeah, we're not saying that to flex at all. No, that is not a good flex at no, all. No, yeah. but but then the, the the food part, like that. That's good to know that a lot of uh, you know dishes that are that you see in a Mexican restaurant are actually you know yeah you you see them in the like the like mole yeah. and other other things like that and like 
and the northern part is more Tex-Mex. It's acknowledging that things like tacos, burritos, stuff on that Taco Bell I, menu is I, more tech has more in common with Texas than yeah. Mex all of Mexico. I feel like you know how the rest of the world had like the spice trade and stuff. Yeah. Right? We our spices came from Mexico originally. I would say. I would yeah. say our the flavor in our cuisine came from down south. You yeah. know, like uh, yeah, they're the first ones that influence all of our food. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of the world's cuisine wouldn't have happened without Mexico, particularly tomatoes, pizza. Like, we, we what? credit Italy with that, but, like... Hey, they put the ingredients together. Yeah, they put it together. Fair enough. Yeah, I'll give them that. I'll give them that. <laughs> Main exports of the country include things like automobiles, electronics, they are the largest flat screen television exporter in the world as of 2017. <gasps> we covered a lot. Okay, I think that's most of it. Landscape, animals, resources, food, economy. Okay, yeah. Should we talk about Mexican people now? Yeah, why not? Next section, go. Okay. Uh, it's flat screen TVs and cars. What cars? Huh. I thought, okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Is there still a, a Volkswagen factory out there? Because... I noticed that when I was there, I was like, oh, my God, there's so many Beatles in yeah, Mexico. Like, yeah. like the VW Beatles, like the Bugs. Yeah, you yeah, know? I know and what I'm you're like, talking about. Why are there so many here? Yeah, And it turned yeah. out that there was a, a, a plant processing, not processing, building them. Yeah, so, an assembly plant. Thank you. Um, and I also know that um, through my following of NASCAR that – both Chevrolet and Ford have factories in Mexico that are building their cars. Wow. I didn't at know least, that. At least back in the 2000s and 2010s. Wow, I don't know okay. about, about these days, but I know for a while that a lot of Chevrolets and Fords were being produced in Mexico. Wow. I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Also, remind me, where, where is tequila? Uh, can, in the where middle? Where did that come from? Somewhere well, in the middle of it. I feel like that's the sentiment of everyone that drinks tequila. Where? Where? And it's like, where? exactly. Where did my day go? Where did my night go? Where did my morning yeah. go? <laughs> Why am I in Mexico? <laughs> Why am I in Mexico? Where are my bands? You know, like all that. Whose stuff. baby is that? <laughs> Who's? What? <laughs> tequila. Chicken's collar or something. My God. <laughs> oh, that's a hangover one. I like that. That was a good one. That was a good reference. I that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's in the middle, in the middle of Mexico. Yeah, yeah, uh huh, yep. You know, it's kind of complicated because there's three different kinds of titles for Mexican. First of all, you have the Mexicano, which means it's a person from Mexico. The Mexiquense is a person from the state of Mexico. And the Mexiqueño, or as we call them, Chilangos, is a person from the capital, Mexico City. So yeah, take note on that. First of all, the country is made up of about 124 million people and is the largest Spanish-speaking country and largest economy in the Latin world. It's a little difficult to get exact numbers because there are a lot of opinions on race in Mexico and the the official census does not technically collect data on ethnicity, but overall it is said that somewhere around two-thirds of the country identifies as Mexican mestizo, about 21% identify as predominantly Amerindian, whereas 7% identify as straight-up Amerindian. The remainder is made up of other groups, mostly white European Mexicans, while a small group of Asians like Lebanese, Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans exist, alongside Afro-Mexicans, which make up about 1.2% of the population. We use the Mexican peso as our currency, and we use type A and B American style plug outlets and we drive on the right side of the road. All the countries speak Spanish. However, technically it isn't an official language. The country recognizes 68 other indigenous languages. These tribes each have their own unique story and history that goes back thousands of years before colonialism as depicted by petroglyphs, codexes, and Mesoamerican carvings. They had unique traits and traditions. The Aztecs were known for having a thriving economy yet had brutal human sacrifice rituals. The Mayans were really good at math and had a unique system of seeing time in an endless cycle pattern rather than linear. And today, tribes still go on carrying ancient traditions, everything from the Raramuri or Taraumara, known as the Running Tribe, who can go over 200 miles in two days with sandals. Ooh. The Voladores de Papantla, upside down hanging, spinning musicians of various central tribes like the Otomi. There's even indigenous festivals held every year in Oaxaca called Gelaguetza. At around 82%, the majority of the country identifies as belonging to the Catholic faith and Catholicism plays a huge and 
and slightly interesting fusion role in Mexican society. Catholicism in Mexico is unique because it has kind of its own story. Every Mexican knows about the Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe Church. It all started by a vision of the Virgin Mary from this guy. Today, native tradition and Catholicism kind of go hand in hand in Mexico. The biggest example probably being the Day of the Dead or the Dia de los Muertos. No other Catholic community does this besides Mexicans. Many scholars claim to trace the ofrenda and dead ancestor honoring tradition to the Aztec festival dedicated to the goddess of the underworld, Mictec Aquihuatl, and stuff like that. You see a lot of holy water and crosses, but there's always like a touch of that, like, you know, pre-colonial Mexican magic added in there, right, Caesar? It is, it's exactly right. Sport-wise, soccer, or football, is of course widely popular. However, not in every region, and many sports are uniquely iconic to Mexico, such as the charreria, which is a kind of like a rodeo, and of course we have the lucha libre. In fact, Mexico has 150 pre-Hispanic games, some still played today, each with the risk of dying from, <laughs> such as a pelota pure pecha, which is like a fire hockey played at night, or Pok ta pok, the four kilogram heavy rubber ball thing that you have to hit with your hips and uh, you know put it through a stone hoop. Can you imagine hitting anything on your body with a four kilogram solid rubber ball? It's like, whoa, I can't believe you guys do that. Mexican history extends millennia prior to any colony and it would take forever to cover it all, but in the quickest way we can condense it. Olmecas. Teotihuacan, Toltecas, and Mexicas. The Mayans in the Yucatan Peninsula. The Spanish arrive, you can kind of guess where that went. Colonization, having the Spanish in Mexico for 300 years. The people all start mixing. Mestizos are born. Independence in 1810 led by this guy. Empire led by this Austrian prince guy. He gets killed. French tried to invade. Yeah, that didn't work out. Benito Juarez, good president. Porfirio Diaz, good president at the beginning, but eventually became a dictator. Civil war, although Mexicans usually call it the Mexican Revolution. Lázaro Cárdenas, the PRI lost for the first time in over 70 years. Then Mexico's first left-wing president was elected in, and despite you political turmoil, the economy actually still stays relatively steady and doesn't spike or dip, so that's good. And here we are today. Some notable people of Mexico or of Mexican descent may include historical figures like Moctezuma and Cuauhtémoc and Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, Jose Maria Morelos, Josefa Oriste Dominguez, Emiliano Zapata, Pancho Villa, athletes like Oscar de la Hoya, Rafa Marquez and Hugo Sanchez, soccer players, singers like Antonio Aguilar, Jorge Negrete, Pedro Infante, Vincente Fernández, Andes, Luis Miguel, Juan Gabriel. Oh, and if you ask any like American Mexican, they all love Selena. Actors like Dolores del Rio, Maria Felix, Roberto Gomez Bolaños. And even though she's not Mexican, Lupita Nyongo was born in Mexico. And they, you guys love her, right? We do. Yeah. <laughs> Diego Luna, Eugenio Derbez, Salma Hayek, Gael Garcia Bernal. Of course, everybody knows Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera, Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu, Alfonso Cuarón, and Guillermo del Toro. Nobel Prize winners Alfonso Garcia Robles, Octavio Paz. And Mario Molina. Some other notable people may include Carlos Canseco. And Carlos Simhelu, whose entire net worth was about 7% of Mexico's GDP at one point. Yeah, he had a lot of business in other countries in Latin America and the world. And speaking of relations with other countries. All right, for that. Whew, that's, that's a list. That's a list. <laughs> that's a list. Jeez. Yeah. I'm just trying to absorb it all right now. I can't really uh, <laughs> take that's it all a, in. That's a list, boy. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I knew like, a couple, right? A couple. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was pretty much just knew Selena. Yeah, I knew <laughs> Selena and Salma Hayek. Yeah, yeah. There's that. There's that. Oh, my goodness. Um, and, and of, of course, you know, there's a lot of history there, which each individual one would could probably be its own video Dude, right there. More than that. I mean, just the Aztec video, just the Mayan video would be nuts. Yeah. It would be absolutely nuts. Not an impossibility on the channel. We got to see who comes out. Right, right. Y'all, like we, we've said in each and every one of our videos, if you come out for it, we'll do it. Yep. You just got to show up. That's yep. pretty much it. Yep. So Mexico is quite the social butterfly. The monarch social butterfly from Michoacan. First of all, in Asia, the Philippines are another former Spanish colony, and they're kind of like the interesting random Asian cousin that shows up that you didn't realize you had. They generally get along, just not in boxing. Japan was the first Asian country to come in contact with Latin America, and today they can travel visa-free. Japan has opened wow. up factories in Mexico and was the first country to respond after the recent earthquake, and Mexico was the first to send aid after the recent tsunami. In Latin America, 
America. Most Mexicans might say the countries of the Pacific Alliance, Colombia, Chile, and Peru. These countries have not only had a tied history under Spanish rule and do great business with each other, but they also piggyback off of each other's cultures and they love watching Mexican TV shows and movies. Mexicans love visiting these places. It's almost like they're just visiting extended family. In regards to Spain, all the colonial animosity has died down fortunately. We're cool now with Spanish people and they love visiting Mexico. Like we mentioned in the Canada episode, Mexicans have been flocking to Canada in recent years after the visa requirements were lifted. And the Canadian government actually encourages immigration to help assist the workforce. Now we reach the US. I know, I know, you've heard the headlines. <laughs> it seems kind of complicated, but if we look at the overall scope of diplomacy, despite any political hindrances, the US and Mexico always seem to have an unbreakable bond that still survives. The US has somewhere around 11 million Mexicans living in it today, which makes up the largest migrant group out of all immigrants. About 80% of Mexico's exports go to the US, and the US makes up about half of Mexico's imports. They cooperate very closely in international affairs, usually backing up similar Western values that the US stands by, and overall, no matter how crazy things get, they can't help but be there for each other in the end. In conclusion, Caesar, what do you think you would say about Mexico? Well, it's almost as if the people of Mexico kind of laugh at the face of destruction. We have volcanoes, earthquakes, drama, but we colorfully play and dance with death. It doesn't bother us. If anything, ironically, it fuels us with even more life. Very well said. Stay tuned. Micronesia, the Federated States of Micronesia, is coming up next. Viva Mexico! <laughs> Right, that was that's, uh, uh, that's that's a good way to put it. Is like like almost biblical. Like the Mexico looks walks into the valley of the shadow of death and fears no evil. Yeah, pretty much, and, and it makes sense. I mean, we're we're freaking tied together, Mexico yeah. and the U.S. And yeah. it's kind of like, yeah. At the end of the day, we need each other. Yeah, like, we're neighbors. We're bro uh, brothers. So you know? regardless of what happens, it what happens is we align politically, you mm -hmm. know, on a on a global stage. Right. You know, but you know when you zoom in, it yeah, it does get a little gray around the areas, and there's a lot of craziness. But I mean, you could say that with anyone, really. Right. You know, right. I, 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 you step away from it all, and you're like, yeah, they're our neighbor. They're right. They're right there with us. Yeah. Mexico is right on the same level as freaking Canada. Like, right, right. At the end of the day, we got each other's backs. Yeah, like, yeah. Anyway, it's like it's like the rising tide lifts all ships, exactly. kind of thing. Like, exactly. Yeah. So it's it's is a good way for him to to acknowledge the drama, but also move on, like you said in the beginning. Yeah. 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 Don't sugarcoat it. Acknowledge it exists, but don't harp on it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Now we're about to get into geography. Go, which. Uh, this is the first of our uh, yeah. geography now deal dealio. I I didn't know they had a go channel. So is that like their travel channel? No, no, it's on the geography now channel. It's just a series on there. Oh, neat. Okay, I was yeah. I wasn't even aware. I wasn't even aware. Geography now, go you know. was part of geography now. So mm -hmm. yeah, let's let's go. Let's let's do it. Play the outro of this, and then it'll go straight into it. There you go. found this guy walking on the beach. There you go. Run home. You're free. <laughs> this is my best friend Nick and getting married to Sarah. So, um, you guys want to go to Mexico? No. Yes, I do. Oh. Sure. Well, you have no choice. We're going anyway. <laughs> Puerto Vallarta. What do you think about Puerto Vallarta so far? The airport's nice. All right, here with Caesar. 
from Woo! Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. First of all, Caesar, thank you so much for hosting us and being able to show us around this entire area. What is Puerto Vallarta all about? Um, how is it different from all the other regions of Mexico? Well, in my opinion, I, I am, well, I'm kind of biased about this one because I am from Puerto Vallarta. I was born and raised Born here. and raised. Puerto Vallarta is basically a great city because it combines a lot of aquatic activities, you know, mm. and with the mountain. We have a lot of activities such as zip lining, you can kayak in the ocean, you can water ski, you can do all these things, but it also preserves that um, typical Mexican town feel, which mm. we're gonna go check out right now downtown. I like that. Side note, the seahorse is actually the iconic animal of this area, Puerto Vallarta. That's why you'll see a lot of them when you come here. Also, another thing you might notice is that most of the trees in this area have a white little plaster thing at the bottoms. That's to kind of what I've been told to keep pests and bugs away from them. All right, we are so lucky because we came here during Las Fiestas de Virgen de Guadalupe, which is a festival that goes on for 12 days. A lot of people come, a lot of celebrating, a lot of food. So let's check it out. Wow, so this is basically Barbie living his best life. Hell uh, yeah, hell yeah. It's a, it's great what he does can open up so many opportunities. And, yeah. you know, I'm experiencing it the first time myself with the UK in, the, in, a, in a few months. So hopefully doing this channel like would open more opportunities like I, that i would love that for us as a as a whole to be a, a, eventually to do something like this to yeah. actually walk the walk yeah you know globetrot. actually actually globe trot yeah you know? so you know first and foremost you're going to be the ambassador that we send first yeah yeah you know? i'm 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 <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying yeah there's a lot less hoops for spencer to jump through yeah right then yeah. for me and my family, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so, yeah. so it's just it's, say it like that. We'll, we'll, we'll send you out first. So yeah, hopefully exactly. that'll, it'll open doors, but I love, this. I know it will. It will. I, I love this. I love that. He's getting out into the see like this to me is, is diving into the culture. This is yeah. diving in. This is getting, getting into Mexico. Yeah. You know, this is what I would call, yeah, you visited Mexico after a trip like this. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So this is Caesar's house, or as I like to call it, Caesar's palace. If you ever visit Puerto Vallarta, make sure you hit him up because this place is tall. Tequila bar. Botran la esclava, which means the slave. It's good though. <laughs> so Caesar, your family built this house, right? Yes, so, yes, they built it from scratch. How does the whole housing thing work in Mexico, in your opinion? Well, in um, a lot of Latin American countries, uh, the way it works is that um, a lot of people just buy a piece of land, you know, and that's how they start off with their housing, and, and they start building, I don't know, the first level maybe, and then just add on uh, rooms from that, and, and on top, uh, you know, as they keep getting money, and as, as their economy keeps progressing. They buy a plot of land, and then they just build. <laughs> yes, typically in the outskirts of the city, you know. Instead of doing the whole mortgage thing, the whole mortgage thing <laughs> over, you know, a period of 30 years. I would love to do it like that. Yep. You know, I mean, there's certain ways to do it now. Uh, uh, on on my TikTok for you page, there's these uh, pod homes that you can uh, b buy some land. And then for the cost of like a, a car, you could build it on that. So I, hopefully I that, that. that's something I could do. I love that. Like it's, it's a, it's, you know, I've I've been around something like that in in Colombia. The family I was visiting, that's what they did. They built the one level, like the, let's say the grandparents built the one level, then their kids built the second and third level, and that parents' kids were charged with building the third and fourth levels. Hey, like 
it just kept going up. And I'm yeah. like, goodness gracious. Yeah, I'm starting to remember that from when we did Jack Mayall, Columbia, you talking about that. So that's yeah, it's that's it's, way, way, it's, way it's kind it. of crazy. It's like and and honestly, that's a, a great way for the family to stay together. You know, yeah. it's like that collective house. Yeah, yeah. Gotta have breakfast at Caesar's aunt's place. Where's Tia? So Caesar is gonna take us zip lining today. Let's go. Hi right, Caesar. So explain. What are we gonna do right now? We are on our way to the Canopy River area, um, up the Rio Quali. We're gonna go uh, Rafael. We will be doing also some zip lining. That's gonna be fun. Zip lining and uh, even mule riding. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting and fun. Tubing, zip lining, mule riding. Yes. That sounds fun. Okay, here at the River Canopy Tour, I'm not allowed to bring my DSLR camera, but I can bring my GoPro. All the adventuring stuff is gonna be on a GoPro now. Let's go. Coming out! <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I've said before, I'm terrified of roller coasters. I will not get on one. I'll go zip lining any day. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> the, I just don't understand that reasoning. You better have your hair tied very tight. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, hey, Barb's here. He's got his hair in a bun right there. So. If he can oh, handle that, I can God. probably handle it there too. You go. God, man. I know. I'm a very complicated person. What? Have y'all not figured that out yet? So instead of having like metal structures and wheels and shit, you want to have one cable and send your ass to the woods? What? Okay, that's fine. I know. I know. Makes no sense. Makes no <laughs> sense. Okay, cool. <laughs> Everyone has their line, right? So there you yeah. go. There's your line. Another iconic landmark of Puerto Vallarta would have to be this place right here behind me, Los Arcos, or The Arches. They do musical performances here, events, all that cool stuff. This is the spot that everybody knows about. So I don't know if you can see that, but that mountain range back there behind me is called La Mujer Durmiente, which means the sleeping woman. If you look close at it, it looks like a sleeping woman with her hair starting at the coast, and then you can see her chin, her chin, her nose, her forehead, and then her chest and her legs, everything. The sleeping woman mountain range. Breakfast time in Pucerias. These are cabeza tacos, tacos de cabeza, and basically it's the head of a, of a cow. So you can get tacos of a lip, um, you can get cheek, you can get a tongue, you can get a, even eyes, I believe. So um, eyes, face gross. meat, face meat. So there's the lips, there's the cheek. I'm gonna add huichol sauce, a little hot sauce. This is the labios, the lips, very fatty. 
and soft. This is the cheek. This one's more meaty, meaty but loose, loose and kind of greasy. And that's my breakfast. So I guess they just use all of the cow and all yep. of the animal there. Yep, yep. That's that's the way it's been. Yeah, you know, I feel like only here do we not do that for whatever yeah. for right. obvious reasons or whatever. But right. um, yeah, man, the cuisine down there is just definitely filling. It's, it's definitely filling. A lot of a lot of full filling foods. That's for sure. Yeah, and even. I'm sure it's good. They know how to do, prepare it well, but hot sauce can cover a world of hurt if in worst case scenario. Yep. 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 Very true. Oh, yeah. This is Sayulita. It's a cool, chill place. I've been told it's kind of like a hippie town. It's right by the ocean. All right. I'm gonna touch the Mexican Ocean. Oh crap! <laughs> oh, the water's so warm. That right there is appealing to me. It is warm waters right there? I would, I would just yep. get in that water and not come out for a very long time. Yep, pretty much until yeah. it gets cold. Y you know. Yeah. <laughs> Like I but just, apparently, if if it stays warm like that, then it wouldn't get cold. It, that's what I'm saying. You stay there forever. <laughs> yeah, forever. forever. Yeah, I, that's I that's it. paradise to me. That's paradise to me, man. Hell Give me yeah. some some warm beaches and some 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 awesome climate without chance of. Well, I mean, there are hurricanes, but whatever. Can't have right. paradise all the time. Yeah. Right. Paul just almost took out a little kid. So mean, Paul. I just bumped into a little girl. They knocked her off the curb. Come, what is that? Michelada. Michelada? I don't think Caesar can. I don't think Caesar can handle that. Oh man, it'll be gone in a couple minutes. Oh, timer. Put timer on, Paul. Oh. There they are. So here's a treat. I found one of the native dogs to Mexico, the Cholo Squinkle, right there. Oh. Cholo Squinkley. You're not native, but you are. So I don't know if you can see those two islands behind me. Those are the Islas Marietas. It's a really cool spot in this area, and there's a huge hole on the top of the island creating a secret beach that people usually go to. We were supposed to go there. Unfortunately, our boat was canceled because of weather issues. So disappointed. However, here's some stock photo images and make sure you check out this place if you come to the Puerto Vallarta region. All along the coast of Mexico, you'll probably find these palm thatched roofs or coverings. These are called palapa. They're all over the place and they, they actually do really well at keeping the rain out of things. Oh, this is so creepy. Check it out. I found a dead puffer fish. Lovely. Fun little side note when driving in Puerto Vallarta in the Bay Area, if you want to turn left, you actually have to go on the separate right side of the road and then turn left from there at the intersection. A little strange. You might have to get used to it. Mexico for medicine. Okay. <laughs> I saw Cialis on there. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> dude, do you see the Z pack? Oh my God. What? Z packs, man. Those things. Uh. Those things, man, are the cure all. I don't care if you're sick or whatever, man. Z packs. If if I went there, I would buy tons. I'd probably get stopped at customs. But it has uh, many just random antibiotics, Z packs, all that. Well, Z pack is an antibiotic, but still, I would get all of them because yeah. holy crap, are they expensive here? No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. No shit. Whew. Yeah. What you got there, Paul? Coconut. Fresh. Nice. Better way 
to spend it in at Caesar's aunt's place. Nice. Caesar hooked up this whole deal with Puerto Vallarta. I just want to say thank you, Caesar. Caesar can help you out if you come to Puerto Vallarta. Tell us, how can people find out about Discover Vallarta? Uh, you guys can find me on my website, uh, discoverpbr.com. And um, yes, we can uh, provide you the best tours. We can show you around the Bay Area. And yeah, just hit us up for uh, whatever information you need. Yeah, Caesar literally just hit me up one day and he gave an amazing <laughs> experience in Puerto Vallarta. So thank you, Caesar, so much again. And hope you guys have a good one. It. Yeah, really enjoyed it. So there I guess you go. those are uh, folks that have helped him out in his travels. So hey, Ken, that's awesome. That's now on my list now. Uh, Puerto, what was it? Called? Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta. That is yeah, man. definitely on my list now. Great. I am so. I want. I want. Uh, I yeah. want us to go this route so badly, dude. I'm like, with you, bro. I to be able you. to travel. Oh my God, dude! What a glorious thing to do is travel. It expand our horizons outside of the yep. united states yep 100 100 mm -hmm. i feel like you know i feel like you know be something i want for you i've done my globe trotting i'm not done yet you know taking a break obviously from globe trotting right but, i get it. but definitely man definitely i would love that experience for you man yeah and eventually for, for us yeah with you out out abroad as well yeah. uh but if anybody has need for uh american uh musician link in description of it uh have a guitar will travel there you go yeah so, man. this was great that was a great video that was a great video. hell yeah let's so, know if y'all want us to continue down adding geography go to our geography now episodes I mean, the ones we've done so far i i, I guess we got to play a little catch up with them yeah. but uh you know we'll be here for a while yeah yes. hey man there's something to look forward to always heck always. yeah and in terms of Mexico, from the Geography Now and Geography Go, what did they miss down below? Yeah. Keeps going in terms of Mexico. Yep. Right? yep. yep. And anyway, thanks for watching. Somewhere around to subscribe, watch another video. What next, Dan? Unplug and do some traveling, guys. Adios, y'all. Later, guys. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.